been playing Marvel Dice Throne from Roxley Game in the Op, and we got thoughts about this Dice Throne Marvel mashup. Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Yes, you do. Ahoy there, YouTube! We are back again today for another game review, our special tag team review. Here with my nine-year-old son, Sean. hey -o. And we're talking about Marvel Dice Throne from Roxley Games and Op Games. And this is for, I believe, two to six players. Take you 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I don't know, let's say eight, nine plus, I think, as long mm -hmm. as you can read. And in Marvel Dice Throne, this is uh, a spinoff of the immensely popular Dice Throne, which has had numerous seasons released. It's got Dice Throne Adventures, which you can do where it's like a story-driven campaign. But what they were able to do is now drop Marvel characters into that world. And we were nice enough to get a review copy of this one. So we have checked it out now a couple of times. We've played through every single one of the characters. And if you're not familiar with Dice Throne, it's a really simple Yahtzee X style game. So how it works is everybody is going to get their own really stinking awesome one of these cards right here. So you get your own special game chair right here. Did, did you think these were pretty cool? Yeah, they were amazing. Yeah, and, and you take the top lid off, and then you have your player board here, and you have your special leaflet here, which talks all about your special abilities, the complexity of your character, and how you might potentially want to play your character, and all the components that you're going to need for a game inside this nice little board. The player reference cards, the cards, your trackers, all sorts of cool stuff like that. But the star of the show, really, is going to be your player board right here. Because on your player board, you are are going to have a whole bunch of different special abilities that you'll be able to do. Once again, going back to that Yahtzee uh, idea, think of like how in Yahtzee you had the large straight, the small straight, the full house, the four of a kind, three of a kind, that sort of thing. Think It's kind of like that, except in this game you have custom D6 dice which will have thematically uh, dice. So, you know, Spider-Man has webs and he has spiders on him. Yep, and he also has the punch thing. Yeah, so you're going to roll the dice three times on your turn, Yahtzee style, pretty much, trying to get the best roll you can and then deal damage to the opponents around you. But where it gets really interesting is that each player also has this big old deck of cards here. It's like a 52 size deck of cards, and each one of these, the decks has its own thematic flavor with special abilities. So there'll be cards that will let you upgrade your boards, there'll be cards that'll help you on defense, there'll be cards that'll help you on offense, there'll be cards that will allow you to get some of these tokens, because you're going to have your own unique tokens and special powers because once again you're a superhero obviously loki is going to play very different from miles morales spider-man and that's the core chunk of the game is that you're just going to be taking turns rolling dice uh purchasing upgrades you know playing defensive things if you want to see a full gameplay video of it there's tons of them online this is a massively popular series uh before it got the marvel slapped onto it which is awesome and what we're going to talk about so focusing on the review part of this we always like to start off. Was there anything that you didn't like about this game, Sean? Mm, I didn't really like how um some things uh, are like even the simplest things they put in sometimes complex ways. You mean on the the, the way they word things? Yeah. Well, I imagine they have to word things very specifically because if you leave any room for interpretation of the rules on a rule, people will try and do it. And you've done that before. You're like, hey, maybe this means that I can do this. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to avoid that. So that's why they have very specific things in the rules. So once again, maybe when I was jumping down to that ages eight plus, it, may, it might change a little bit. And also, that could be the kind of thing where you might want to make sure that if you're playing with younger kids, for instance, your age, you might want to stay on the lower complexity side. Is that something that might potentially do it? Yeah. Because I can't, I kind of agree with them there. Um, you're not going to get the full experience of your character when you play it once. Because chances are, uh, you're just not, you might not use a specific type of token. Like I just played as Scarlet Witch and I think there was two tokens. No, there's one token that I didn't even utilize. Likewise, with uh, with Sean, there was one token he was playing as Thor. I think with Loki, I, I think with Loki I used all mine. And mm -hmm. I think you did not use all yours with Miles Morales. Uh, I actually did use all mine. Okay. But but I do understand what he's saying. There is, it's this is not a gateway game. Despite the fact it's a 30-minute brawler, this is the kind of thing where I think it's a slight step above that. Would you agree with that? <coughs> is that what you're trying to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. So not a children's game necessarily, but definitely a family game. game. Me personally on the con side... Um, but the only thing is, I just want more. It only plays, this this base box only plays four players, but if you have 
other boxes or other dice thrown that are season one and season two, you can mix them together and you can go up to six players, which is fantastic. And any time I say to myself in a review, oh, wow, what's a con? I want more of this game. I think that means the game's pretty stinking great. Yeah. Um, you can't, in this Marvel thing, you don't have to use the other Marvel boxes. You can use, like, the normal boxes. Yeah. I think the one thing that, that does kind of stink in here is train pause. But, but overall, honestly, I don't think I have any major cons with this game at all. Yeah, this game is fun. Um, so moving on to the pros, I'm going to slap a Bowers best you want it. That's how much I like it for games that I rate a 9 or higher. And Dice Thrones, honestly, has been a game that I've been wanting to own for quite some time. I played it with my buddy Brandon, who's been on some videos with me before. And I absolutely fell in love with it there. It felt just like the next evolution of Yahtzee, King of Tokyo a little bit. Games of that elk. It's so clean. It's so clear. This And, they, and they, they've... Turn this into a system, which I really like, where it's just like, this is the character. This is it. So we could just, re they could just release one box. And it's just like, hey, here's the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Willy Wonka thing. And that would be fantastic. And people would, you would want that, right? Mm -hmm. You'd want to see what the abilities were. Oh, I'm throwing candy at people. I'm turning people into blueberries. What kind of crazy shenanigans are going on? And when games can get into a system like that, like the the versus system and stuff like that i think it's just becomes just like oh, start churning that money as long as you have a fantastic game at its core and this does i feel like this gameplay is easy to learn it's easy to teach it had a rodney smith how to play video which was fantastically done and even even without that just reading through the rules it's still a very simple game to pick up the player reference card really does a great job of remind you exactly what you need to do and every turn is very same you're gonna be doing the same thing over and over and over again but mm -hmm. there's enough cards in your deck and you're not gonna go through nearly all the cards in your deck right uh -uh. not even close and plus in the future they could add more cards add more characters i absolutely enjoy this game yeah. where are you on this game i would rate this about a nine i think this is fantastic one of my favorite games of all time easily probably in the top 200 somewhere in there uh I'd now, rate, i've also played it a little bit more than you so that's I, i'd rate it a nine um probably top 300 you i don't think you've played 300 games <laughs> yes, I have. okay so this uh okay still that's really good that's really good anytime you're in the top of thousand that's fantastic so I've you played a lot of games with you okay i forget uh so you also love this game so what did you like so much about it uh i like um it's i like the artwork uh yeah it's pops yeah the components help as well the components mix with the artwork make everything look really good just mm -hmm. quality wise everything like even this box just feel this box it just feels like a really quality box everything about this feels top notch the dice are fantastic the boards are great yeah, I think component-wise, they absolutely crushed it. The storage is simple. Setting the game up is really simple as mm -hmm. well. Uh, but I set on, it up by myself. Yeah, moving on to the gameplay. The characters all felt different and unique. Each time, you know, it was like, oh, this plays different than the last person, right? Mm -hmm. Like, with Thor, it's just like the, the, the Molnir, just constant, just bam, pounding with the hammer, then pounding you with abilities. <laughs> and then, like, I was, Scarlet Witch was like, ah, I'm just messing with your brain, and you, you have to roll my die, which means, you know, yeah, you can still get straights and stuff like that. You can still get some of your abilities, but not as good. And then um, there was... And he, um, when he was Loki, uh, who's probably the most annoying character there is... Thematically, it works. He's annoying. Um, uh, he... <laughs> Um, Loki has, like, these illusions, and you can have, like, partial success, like, success, or complete missing. Yeah, and that was really powerful. And then with Scarlet Witch, it worked really well thematically, because as I acquired just more status effects on me, and just more and more and more and more came in to, like, stress me out, uh, I could then start using my Crackle Tokens to just dealing this big, huge chunks of damage, which almost won me the game. But not quite. Uh, and then there's S Miles Morales, Spider-Man, who's he's obviously incredibly hard to hit, and Sean annoyed the living snot out of me with his defense <laughs> rolls. That was hilarious. And once again, this game is just so dirt simple. I think you could probably teach this to Maxon right now if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. That's, if he wasn't, you know. Yeah, he moved away. But it's just, you, get, you get what I'm saying. There. We don't want to hear. We they don't want to hear our life story. Then let's stop talking about it. Okay. <laughs> but anywho, we love it. Slapped a Bowers best seal on this one. This is Marvel Dice Throne. If you're on the fence about this one, I, I would say um, if your family has any experience with games, 
just in general. Like if you play Yahtzee, Phase 10, Uno, Skip Bo, Ticket to Ride, Catan, Pandemic, anything of that ilk, you're going to be able to pick this up. No problem at all, especially if you watch the Rodney video. I can't recommend it enough. And they, in fact, right at the beginning of the rules, I think they mentioned it as well. Uh, Slam Dunk. That is Marvel Dice Throne from Roxley Games and Op Games. Uh, I am so excited to explore this world more with my family, and I think you will as well. But if you enjoy this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as we're trying to reach 50,000 subscribers because it's bigger than 10,000. Yeah! And in the comments below, let me know. You want to mush one character into Dice Throne. Any character, but only one. What expansion promo pack are you releasing, Sean? You can go Any first. one character. You can go first. Okay, for me personally, I want Peyton Manning. <laughs> I throw a football at you so good, He throws not. a football at your face. It knocks you down. Okay, so no, no. Seriously, though, uh, that probably wouldn't work. We needed at least someone with superpowers. I feel like that's fair. Uh -huh. So instead, I would go with Highlander. Who now? Highlander. He's this, uh, he's this guy who uh, they used to be Highlanders and go around, and they all are really powerful. And when they chopped each other's heads off, they would gain somebody, their other power, the other person's power, but that was the only way to kill them. And so Highlanders would go around chopping each other's heads off. So maybe I could, like, chop off your die or something. or your, I don't know. But you gain their abilities. So I feel like you could probably start sucking up people's abilities. That being said, my reality warp, I could have actually stolen one of your positive status effects. But, yeah, I went with Highlander. It's a really weird one. Who are you picking? I want Sirius Black. Mmm. I like that. It'd be he interesting. Could, he could have, like, ability that turns him into the big black dog guy. Yeah. And, like, the big black dog, like, he could, like, transform into the big black dog for a turn and do, like, damage. Instead of Mjolnir, he could have Creature, but Creature hates him. So he would, sometimes he'd work, and sometimes he wouldn't work because he hates you. Oh, yeah, That'd Creature. Really, I mean. Creature hates. <laughs> and that's the beauty of a system like this where you can just interweave any characters you want. Uh, but, yeah, let me know in the comments below what character would you want. And, as always, thanks for your time, too. Hopefully it didn't run out of space, run out of space, run out of space. Hopefully it didn't run out of space. because This train... video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.